are back with our political panel, Dr. Dr. Lara Greaves, Sam Suchdeva and Janet Wilson. Welcome back to you all. Now I'm going to dive into tax. This week it's dominated, but we've only been given just a little bit, haven't we, Janet? We've mm. been given this research, uh, but mm. a, a gaping kind of hole as well. Yeah. I think there is a, a plan to all of that. You know, with with my comms hat on, mm -hmm. my former comms hat on, mm -hmm. I think what they're doing is, is flying that kite to see how it flies, to see whether people it's going to rack the nation up and it's going to become the hot button issue that they hope it's going to become. And then they are going to probably poll endlessly because let's face it, they're all poll driven nutcakes, <laughs> as to, to paraphrase David Longy. Um, and then they'll, they'll make a decision about where they're going to go and what they're going to do. It's, it's not going to be, I would imagine, before the election. They're not going to come out mm. with anything, but they could well decide to, to do something after it, or they could do something after it and be like Bill English in 2008 and not put it on their agenda and just do it anyway. Well, that's what um, people will be drumming up, isn't it? This yeah. idea. Sam, yeah. how do you think it's landed out there? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I think the phrase you used um, in the uh, debate with uh, Chloe and David was that, you know, are people being softened up? And mm. that's it. So I think it, it there seems to be a sense that this fairness issue is is a reasonable one. You know, I think um, you know I take David point, David's points about this being you know unrealised assets in some cases, but this idea that you've got you know the wealthiest three hundred odd people in the country who are paying what half the the rate of of the rest of New Zealand, the average New Zealander, it's that that issue of fairness is one that probably cuts through to the electorate mm -hmm. um, in, in ways that other arguments don't. Whether it'll win the day, I don't know, but it's interesting that that's what they're pushing. Yeah, and it puts tax which which is very unpopular politically to talk about generally, squarely back on the agenda, doesn't it? Yeah, the word's got really negative connotations. I think also they have mm. to figure out where they're going to land that tax, like where mm. in the wealth. Like, it's easy to beat up on the 300 most richest, but where does it land in terms of those, like, mum and dad investors versus the wealthy? They've got to still figure that out in the, all of this. But what I would say is, like, taking that sort of tax report back to sort of first-year research methods team, <laughs> is that normally what happens is when you come up with some research, especially $5 million worth of research, you want to have a banger of an implication section mm. where you go, hey, here's the policy implications. And that's what we teach kids in first year. So, And so why are they missing, do you think, Lara? Well, because there is that connection. It's like, are they just going to do a slow reveal? Yeah. Like, what yeah. is happening? And that's why I really yeah. appreciated your comments on PR there. <laughs> a striptease, I, I think they call it in I, the business. I think it is called a striptease. And I find it really interesting because it's quite dangerous for Labour, given that they've, they've been like Cinderella at the ball. For how many elections now have they taken CGT, capital yeah. gains tax, and said, this is our baby, this is important, this will lead to the breaking down the inequality that mm. we see? Mm. And and then running away from it. So I think mm. potentially it's, it could be dangerous for them to, to be trotting it out again, really. So why do they keep going back to it? Is it to satisfy part of the Labour voter base, do you think, Sam? Yeah, I mean, I think there is, that is a fundamental Labour view, right, that mm. you need to have uh, fairness and that workers get their fair share of, of income and, you know, aren't disproportionately punished. I think the former um, British High Commissioner, Laura Clark, had quite a good line mm. in the speech before she left that we have a Scandinavian ambition for our public service but an American approach to tax. And that's probably how, how Labour feels about it. And, you know, David Parker in particular is a, is a real warrior on these sorts of things. So, you know, I think it's... I can it's, tell. It's, it's almost yeah. palpable, isn't it, when you <laughs> yeah. see him talking about yeah. it? Um, I want to switch uh, tracks here just for a second because the investigation uh, to the Green Party, which has mm. been a, there's been an investigation bubbling along into Elizabeth Kitty Kitty, and we're seeing sort of anonymous sources coming out, and we're seeing um, a few moves there. Um, but it, it, is that fair, I suppose, to have this investigation ongoing at a time when the list is being chosen? Do you think, Lara? Yes. Yeah, so with the Greens, they're always quite open about their conflict, and that is one of the kind of hallmarks of Green Party politics, and has been over the years. Now, I don't personally think a lot of their supporters, based on the academic literature, are that worried about it. But they have to remember they're going to probably go into coalition with Labour if Labour wins. So, like, it's actually kind of potentially starting to become off-putting to those centre voters. Like, you can actually make that argument, like, that's who's going to have the power. They're going to be ministers. And they've got all of this, like acting like they're not quite a political party like what the, yeah it's I think it'll be it's quite frustrating I think for people on the left it's yeah. very messy isn't it Janet yeah very um and I think there, w there was 
a rump of what I'd call um, Hearn Bay Ponsonby matrons who would be quite firm Green voters and James Shaw voters. Mm. Um, he would probably want me to wash my mouth out with soap <laughs> for saying that, but it's true. Yes. And they see this behaviour and they go, no, that's completely unacceptable. Yeah. And what I mean, any party inwardly fighting, outwardly, is always a, a vote and loser. And leaking, and leaking. And leaking. I yeah. can tell you from 2020 with the Nats, it's a vote loser. It's a big vote loser. And why is this... It's, it's taken already, I think, around three weeks to get mm. this investigation going during a recess, which is not a time when there are a lot of stories around. <laughs> uh, is it, what do you think about how it's been politically managed? Yeah, I, I, I kind of question the decision to have an investigation in the first place. If they had... James and Marama had simply said, this is inappropriate, uh, it's not the behaviour we expect from one of our caucus, we'll be disappointed disciplining her internally, that's the end of the matter. Mm. I think people probably would have moved on, but now you've got this sort of protracted process where they're maybe looking through WhatsApp group chats to see what else she said. And, I mean, people people badmouth their <laughs> colleagues all the time. That's just that she <laughs> sent us, it to... No, no, of course, not us. But she sent it to the wrong group. So it's sort of like, where, where does that lead to if you find that she has been saying other unsavoury things in private? Can you discipline a, an MP for that? I, I don't know. I think the Greens have fairly high standards in terms of their code of conduct, but... It's still, it's just got really messy and I think they could have clamped down on it um, in a much better way. Much sooner. And we still haven't heard from Elizabeth Kitty Kitty, so we still don't have her side of all of this either, No, Janet. we don't. And I'm sure she will be given her time and her day. Um, the fact that she's chosen not to go to the media and tell her story is is heartening, I have to say. Well, Sean, she hasn't, for the fed, she hasn't fed the process, the yeah. outside process. She's relying on the inside process. And the other um, good actor, I think, in the midst of all of this is Chloe, who was mm. the subject of some of the Mean Girl chat. And I think she's just sailed on through it, which I think is the only thing you can. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a good advice for life. Thank you so much uh, for joining us, Lara Greaves, Sam Sachdeva, and Janet Wilson on this morning's panel. Thank you.